Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. You ready for this? Well, good morning, and I picked a very, very special day because it's Melania's birthday. So I said, let's do it on Melania's birthday. So happy birthday to Melania. All right. Hopefully there'll be visits in between, but have you decided on, or do you want to tell us what you got her? Well, I better not get into that because I may get in trouble. Maybe I didn't get her so much. I'll tell you what, she has done. I got her a beautiful card. You know, oh, I'm very busy at to this be point. running out <laughs> looking for presents, okay? But I got her a beautiful card. There's some beautiful flowers. Oh. And she did a fantastic job with France. I'll tell you what, the people of France are just, were spellbound by what happened with their great president who just left. Emmanuel, and uh, he is a wonderful guy. And, you guys and, really got along great. We, you well, guys got along great. And, and we did, and, uh, you know, they are both terrific people. And uh, Brigitte, and we had a, a fantastic <laughs> time. And much more importantly, we accomplished a lot. We really accomplished a lot, more than anybody knows. You'll be seeing what we accomplished. Well, give us a hint. Give us a hint. Well, I think we really came to recognize the... You know, I can say it from my standpoint, but uh, he is viewing, I believe, Iran a lot differently than he did before he walked into the Oval Office. And I think that's important. <laughs> he understands where I'm coming from with respect to Iran. Iran is a real problem for this country. The president made a horrible deal. When I say the president, I'm talking about past administration, made a horrible deal, giving $150 billion, given $1.8 <laughs> in cash in actual cash it's carried out theirs. in barrels and in boxes uh, from airplanes. It's in inconceivable, $1.8 billion. And all they do is scream death to America, death to America. And by the way, they're not screaming it so much anymore. They were screaming it with him. They don't scream it with me. We haven't seen their little boats circling our ships in the ocean lately because they know if they do circle the ships they're not going to be there very longer i'm going to bomb the shit out of them oh god this is how we woke up this morning you know it, it was scotty and i were just talking about it and so was brett we were, we were just sitting here going you know in the morning at eight o'clock in the morning i leave my phone downstairs i got an upstairs downstairs i leave my phone downstairs why because I need to have coffee in the morning. I need to go and have, uh, you know, a little look-see at other news, the things that are happening everywhere, uh, because I know that if this man speaks at 8 o'clock in the morning, if this man says anything, tweets anything, to, it's going to suck all the oxygen out of the room. And there will be no room in this world for anything else except for his delusional, insane Blame Americans first rants, okay? There, and so I don't look, okay? I don't look. But you go downstairs, you know, I go into my little yellow office. You know, I love yellow. I go into my little yellow office. I sit there. I, you know, turn on my computer. I turn on the TV. And there he is early, early in the morning. And it starts out almost normal. I mean, he's lying about uh, what Macron actually said about Iran. Macron, you know, went in front of our Congress yesterday. And Macron, before he left, called the president's foreign policy insane. He said that the president is insane. He said pulling out of the Paris Accord. The Paris Accord, you know, he's French. Uh, was insane. He said a whole lot of things to the Congress yesterday about isolationism being the wrong path, about, you know, this uh, uh, nationalism, this uber nationalism that's going on in this country being uh, ridiculous. And, and and why is he abandoning uh, the United States uh, role as, uh, you know, leader of the free world? It did, he got standing ovations bipartisan standing over the whole. Co you don't ever see this in our Congress. Personally, if you ask me, I do not share the fascination for new strong powers, the abandonment of freedom, and the illusion of nationalism. Oh my God.
going to bomb the shit out of him. Apparently because Macron uh, put on some dog and pony show for the president and played him like a fiddle. And, you know, I think I understand for real now what is going on. You know, the president is somehow beholden to Vladimir Putin. And we know this because uh, just as an aside, this is one of the other stories, you know, that will never get talked about today, which is just so bizarre. But Chris Wiley, remember Chris Wiley, guy with the pink hair, you know, the uh, um, uh, data scientist that worked over at Cambridge that is a whistleblower now? Well, he testified behind closed doors to the uh, House yesterday. And he told the House that it was Steve Bannon who came in and actually named Cambridge Analytica. Uh, and it really is a, a, a British defense contractor and that the Mercers were going to put all this money into it uh, and that the Mercers were counseled by lawyers about the appearance and that uh, because it was a presidential campaign, they had to have an appearance that they were an American company because foreign money and foreign influence in an American election is illegal. And so they set up this thing called Cambridge Analytica, which really is a shell company, nothing more in uh, Delaware. And the Mercers you know, plowed all this money into it and put their guy at Breitbart, Steve Bannon, uh, as the head of it. And Steve Bannon named it Cambridge Analytica, okay? And then uh, 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 he said that Steve Bannon turned it into a perfect propaganda machine and its goals were voter suppression inside the United States. And they also were told, this is what Chris Wiley, uh, Wiley said, that they were also told to do uh, research on only one foreign person. Only one, and that was Vladimir Putin, to research Vladimir Putin and to figure out how to make Vladimir Putin palatable to the American people. Isn't that something? To make Vladimir Putin like a new leader in Russia, even though, you know, Vladimir Putin, this is his like third time around, right? KGB guy, then, uh, you know, prime minister, then, uh, you know, left, then, uh, you know, was the second, now he's the best. I mean, it's just so... They, they, the, the, Wiley testifies to the House Intelligence Committee yesterday uh, and to the Judiciary Committee yesterday that Cambridge Analytica was turned into this massive propaganda machine and part of the prop, the agiprop, was to turn Vladimir Putin into a, a, just a great friendly white guy that, you know, loves America and loves Donald Trump and wants Donald Trump and, you know, he's in America, you know, I don't know. Uh, so it's like really, really sick that we now have this portion of the Russia story uh, as delivered by this whistleblower, Chris Wiley. Uh, so that's important. Okay. So the only person he was told to research was Vladimir Putin. Now, we understand through this uh, Fox and Friends appearance this morning where he starts out like almost normal, except that, you know, it's a one way street with him, his marriage. He gets to cheat. He gets to do, uh, you know, uh, uh, prostitutes. He gets to do, uh, uh, you know, uh, Stormy. He gets to do uh, Karen McDougal. You know, he gets to do whoever he wants to do. And then, uh, you know, uh, but but for Melania's birthday, she got a card. You know, I'm just thinking like the French president and his wife, Brigitte, you know, they came over here from France where they have things like Chanel, where they have things like French perfume, where they have things like uh, Hermes. You know, ask Oprah. She's not allowed to shop there. But, you know, maybe that they could have, you know, uh, Donald could have thought about this for a minute. But see, this is just more evidence that he doesn't think more than one day out. He doesn't think about the future. He doesn't think about you. He doesn't think about America. He doesn't think about anything but himself. OK, so does he ask the French president, bring me a beautiful gift for my wife. I'll, you know, reimburse you. You've got you know, like the most amazing French designers over there, La Croix. No, the house of La Croix is closed. Yeah, just saying. But I mean, you know, something Louboutin. I bring her. She loves the Louboutins. She loves them. Bring her, you know, a, a you know, a pair made just for. No, no, nothing. He got her flowers and a card. Anyway, it started out like that. I mean, and that for me was kind of like normal, but. He starts talking then immediately about Macron and how he's he sees, you know, what's going on with Iran now and that Donald Trump schooled Emmanuel Macron in the Mediterranean area. Yeah, he Donald Trump schooled Macron. France, Marseille, you know, the southern part of France, Italy, you know, Sicily and, and, the, and the southern part of Italy and Spain, you know, they're all in the Mediterranean. I mean, they're all right there. But, you know, Macron needed to be taught about his region and his region's history with Islamic countries by Donald Trump. 
I mean, this just blew my mind. Now, you know, Macron is trying to keep Donald Trump in the Iran deal because Iran is in compliance. And uh, quite frankly, they want to do business. And all of Europe wants to do business with Iran. Now, right now, we do massive amounts of business with Saudi Arabia. And Donald Trump is best friends. I mean, they're besties, right? The the House of, well, it's not the House of Saud anymore. They got this new guy who apparently has beheaded. This was in The Guardian today. He has beheaded 48 people in uh, this short period of time that he's been, uh, you know, in charge of uh, Saudi Arabia after his coup. You know, he threw out uh, the other, you know, uh, Prince uh, Bin Talil, who owns a big chunk of Fox News. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's like uh, kept them. He, he he arrested them and put them in like the Ritz Carlton Hotel in Saudi Arabia. And some of them were tortured there, whatever. This is the new guy. But Donald Trump just loves them. Remember, he went over there and they did the sword dance and he just loves Saudi. And Saudi uh, obviously wants to keep selling oil at $80. A- well, France would like to buy oil from Iran. And as long as Iran is in compliance with the non-proliferation agreement and they're not enriching, uh, you know, Macron is happy and they are in compliance. That's just, a, a, a you know, an inconvenient fact that the International Atomic Energy, all of them, they, you know, they, they have uh, vouched for the inspections, uh, meeting all of the standards that were set in this agreement. And Europe wants to start trading with Iran. They have a lot. OK, remember this. Russia and Iran want Syria. And Russia wants the end of NATO. Because look at who responds to uh, Syria when they gas their people, if they gas them this time. We still don't know. Jury's out, whatever. But we know that he's used gas 11 times. And so when the world is called to uh, you know, respond to things like this, war crimes, the NATO allies show up. France shows up. England shows up. We show up. Right? Russia hates this, and Russia would like to break NATO. So what Macron came over here to tell Donald Trump is that NATO wants to stand with the United States in this alliance that has, uh, you know, served us really well for 70 some odd years. But, you know, Russia wants NATO broken up. And if Donald Trump pulls out of the Iranian, uh, you know, nuclear agreement, NATO will not be uh, standing with the United States. They will part ways with the United States. And so this serves Vladimir Putin's purpose, you know, like perfectly. And so Trump is going to do a couple of things. He's going to let Iran enrich uranium because this is what Russia wants and and that's why he'll pull us out of the agreement on on May 12th and he'll also end NATO at the same time which as you know has been Russia's goal in propping up Trump who is all too happy to stand on stages and say we're done defending the world they have to pay more and they need to pay you know and they don't pay as much as to end NATO to end NATO So this was like really super important today, what he said at the beginning of this conversation. But again, he sucks all the oxygen out of the room because he becomes completely and totally unhinged in this 30 minute phone call to Fox and Friends because apparently the president doesn't realize that Fox and Friends is a TV show and other people are actually watching it like the Justice Department, like Mueller, like Comey, like Michael Avenatti. Like, so you might be saying, I didn't see it. I'll play for it. Did he say anything stupid? It's Donald Trump on Fox and Friends. It was like a hose of projectile vomit coming at me before coffee. This is not fair. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.